Hello, my name is Nishant Shah, and this presentation is about gram-positive anaerobic type of bacteria called actinomyces. The infectious bacterial disease caused by actinomyces species is known as actinomycosis. Physiology. Actinomyces organisms grow under anaerobic conditions. However, they can also be facultative anaerobes, meaning they use oxygen if it is available. Actinomyces species are normally present on the enamel of teeth, gums, tonsils, and the lining of gastrointestinal and urogenital tract. As we can see from macroscopic colony of Actinomyces on the left and the gram stain of Actinomyces species on the right, while individual bacteria are rod-shaped, Actinomyces colonies form fungus-like branch networks of hyphae. So, initially, they were assumed to be fungus and acquired name Actinomyces, meaning gray fungus in Greek. These organisms are true bacteria since they lack a mitochondria and a nuclear membrane and are produced by fission. As one would expect, organisms are inhibited by penicillins but not by antifungal antibiotics. Actinomyces species are not acid fast, meaning they are readily decolorized by acids after staining and grow slowly in the culture, which gives it a tendency to produce chronic and slowly developing infections. Structure. Over the years, there have been over 30 different species of actinomyces that have been identified. However, over 70% of the most prevalent human infections are caused by actinomyces israeli. Other species like actinomyces nias lundi, actinomyces radingi, and actinomyces ternosensis have also been reported. Since actinomyces are found in human commensal flora, they are present in polymicrobial flora and are referred to as companion microbes. Pathogenesis and immunity. Actinomyces live harmlessly in the lining of the mouth, GI, and urogenital tract. Actinomyces are considered endogenous since the organisms cause disease only when the normal mucosal barriers are disrupted by trauma, surgery, or infection. If the tissue lining becomes damaged by injury or disease, the bacteria can penetrate deeper into the body. The Actinomyces bacteria then thrive deep inside human tissue. These organisms colonize mostly in the upper respiratory tract, the female genital tracts, and the GI tract. A CT scan can reveal the damage caused by actinomycosis. On the left, the CT slide of upper respiratory shows a heterogeneous mass with pleural extension. In the middle, the CT slide is showing pelvic actinomycosis associated with an intrauterine contraceptive device. On the right, the CT findings of gastrointestinal show the correlation to factors that contribute to clinical symptoms of bowel obstruction. Pathogenesis and immunity. Actinomycosis is characterized by chronic granulomatous lesions that cause pus or become superative and form abscesses connected by sinus tracts. Macroscopic colonies of actinomyces are known as sulfur granules. As it can be seen with the arrows on the sides of crushed granule, they resemble grains of sand and are present in the abscesses and sinus tracts. It has a yellow or orange appearance and are masses of filamentous organisms bound together by calcium phosphate. As discussed in the earlier slide, organisms cause disease only when the normal mucosal barriers are disrupted. So naturally, the first form of defense against actinomyces is intact mucosa. As one would expect, Cell-mediated and humoral immunity responses are also body's defense mechanism against actinomyces species. Actinomycosis is not common, but are often polymicrobe. They are mostly present in the gums and are most common cause of infection in dental procedures and oral abscesses. Epidemiology. Infections caused by actinomyces are endogenous with no evidence of person-to-person -person or any environmental factor. Diseases are classified according to organ systems affected. Cervical facial infections. 
These types of infections are seen in patients with poor oral hygiene or who have undergone an invasive dental procedure or oral trauma. In these patients, the actinomyces invade into the diseased tissue and cause the infection. Thoracic infections. Most patients have a history of lung disease which has spread to another tissue. Abdominal infections are often seen in patients undergone gastrointestinal tract surgery or who have had trauma to the bowel. Pelvic infections. For most patients, it can be secondary infection to abdominal actinomyces or a primary infection due to intrauterine devices. Central nervous system infections are our most serious and usually represent hematogenous spread where cells of primary tissues penetrate into blood vessels from one infected tissue to another. Clinical disease and syndrome. Cervicofacial is a most common type of actinomycosis and accounts for half of all cases. The infection develops inside the tissues of the neck, jaw, or mouth. Most cases are related to the complication of gum and dental problems or even poor oral hygiene. The cervicofacial disease may occur as an acute pyogenic infection or as a slowly evolving relatively painless process. Symptoms like tissue swelling with fibrosis and scarring as well as draining sinus tracts along the angle of the jaw and neck send alerts of the possibility of actinomycosis. The second most common is thoracic actinomycosis, which develops inside the lungs or connected airways. Symptoms of thoracic actinomycosis are nonspecific. However, abscesses may form in the lung tissues early and then spread into adjoining tissues as the disease progresses. Clinical disease and syndromes continued. Abdominal actinomycosis can occur when something tears a wall of the intestine which allows the bacteria to penetrate into deep tissue or it can also develop as a complication following abdominal surgery. Pelvic actinomycosis is reported mostly in female patients. The actinomyces bacteria spread from the female genitals into the pelvis. The infection is associated with the long-term use of an intrauterine device. The device may damage the womb lining over time, which allows bacteria to penetrate deep into the tissue. Or, it can also occur as a relatively benign form of vaginitis and cause extensive tissue destruction, including the ovarian abscesses or development of tubo-urethral obstruction. For the central nervous system actinomycosis, the most common indicator is a solitary brain abscess by meningitis and epidural abscesses have also been reported. Treatment. The initial treatment of actinomycosis involves both drainage of abscesses or surgical debridement of the involved tissues with prolonged administration of antibiotics. Penicillin continues to be the drug of choice. Actinomyces are susceptible to penicillin, carbapenems, macrolides, and clindamycin. Tetracyclines are used as alternative agents in the non-pregnant penicillin allergic patients and have been reported to be as effective as penicillin in the cervicofacial form of the disease. Since bacterial resistance to penicillin are quite common, the combination of ampicillin and metronidazole or clindamycin has been used successfully to treat the disease. However, metronidazole alone is not suitable for treating actinomycosis because fermentive actinomycetes are resistant. Prevention and control. There are no specific measures for preventing actinomycosis. However, maintenance of good oral and dental hygiene, particularly removal of dental plaque, may reduce the risk of oral infection including low-grade periodontal disease. The patient should limit the amount of sweet and sticky food to lower the risk of tooth decay. Clinicians and patients should be educated on the risk of actinomycosis when intrauterine devices are used. Additionally, use of antibiotic prophylaxis during the mouth and gastrointestinal tract penetration procedures can also lower the risk of the infection. 
novel drugs and therapeutics. In moderately severe to severe forms of cervical facial and thoracic actinomycosis, rosefin as a single agent has been used successfully. Broad spectrum IV antibiotic combinations such as vancomycin and piper allicillin amipanum have been used with favorable results as well in abdominal and pelvic actinomycosis. A novel antibiotic, tetazolid, which is a next generation oxazolidinone, has favorable outcomes both as monotherapy and in combination with bacitrum in severe cases of actinomycosis. Additionally, adjunct hyperbaric oxygen therapy and refractory actinomycosis has shown favorable clinical results as well. In conclusion, actinomyces species are normal inhabitants of the oral microbial flora. So, a positive culture with actinomyces species does not always imply the diagnosis of actinomycosis. On the other hand, a negative culture does not exclude actinomycosis either. Bacterial cultures and pathology are the cornerstones of diagnosis and require particular attention to prevent misdiagnosis. Delayed treatment can lead to increased morbidity and even mortality. However, preventative measures such as dental hygiene, change of an intrauterine device every five years may limit the occurrence of actinomycosis. Thanks for listening.